BMW Turbo Inline 6s. Engines like the N54, N55, S55, B58, and S58 have given BMW the reputation of the king of modern inline sixes. Engines that are very robust in factory form that with bolt-ons and tuning can make almost double the factory horsepower rating. Now to better understand the German 2JZ, we have to go back to where it started. In 2006, BMW produced their first mass-produced turbo inline six called the N54. This was an engine offered in the 335i initially and then proliferated throughout BMW's lineup by 2008. This was an all aluminum three liter dual overhead cam inline six with two TDO 3-10T turbochargers, making eight PSI boosts for an overall output of 302 brake horsepower and later produced up to 335. These engines featured direct injection and VVT or Vanos on the intake and exhaust camshaft. Even though these engines were out class by the M3's S65 4 liter V8, the aftermarket soon proved these were the engines you needed to have. N54s come for the factory with forged crankshafts and a forged rod and cast piston combo. Charge pipes, down pipes, larger intercooler, and a tune is enough to outrun E92 M3s, which are double the price. What holds the N54 back specifically is its tiny twin turbos. They tap out at around 500 to the wheel. If converted to a quality single turbo kit, then you will hit the limits of the fuel system, and then next, the rotating assembly at around 700 to the wheels. <laughs> In 2010, you saw the introduction of the N55. This was a more refined version of the N54, giving better factory emissions, a single turbocharger instead of twins, and the introduction of variable valve lift known as Valtronic. When comparing the N54 to the N55, you immediately notice the intake cam duration on the N55 is much higher, and combined with the higher lift cam, the cylinder head flows better than the N54. But that's not the full story. The N55 is a cast crank rod and piston, rather than the N54 is a forged crank rod and then a cast piston. Where the N54 still has the advantage is in the power potential, since the twin turbos can supply more air at higher horsepower, maxing at right around 500 to the wheels, while the N55 taps out at around the 420 horsepower mark. In factory trim, the N54 and N55 run the same factory boost level of APSI, but when higher boost levels are commanded in bolt-on and tune combinations, the N55 runs out of steam. The N55 is better in factory trim, but when people want more power, they're going to be well suited with an N54. Now, how do you improve on greatness? You turn up the boost. In 2014, BMW introduced the S55, which was the first time a turbo inline six was put inside of an M car. The S55 kept the same three liter displacement of the M55, but ditched the single Borg Warner B03 for twin MHI turbochargers, giving it 425 horsepower and 406 pound feet of torque. It also introduced air to water intercooling, which kept the intake piping short and reduced lag and is much more efficient at cooling the air charge. In comparison to the prior M54 and M55, the S55 was a closed deck block, which added rigidity near the combustion chamber since it runs a higher factory boost of 18 PSI versus the 8 PSI on the M55. The S55 was equipped with a lightweight forged crankshaft and rods, Molly lightweight forged pistons. Also, the S55 has identical camshaft duration and lift as the M55, almost as if the cylinder head was a direct transplant. Only downside is the S55 is M specific, so don't expect any cheap M2, M3, or M4s to go have fun with. The engine comes at a cost. One, two, three. Now the M cars aren't the only ones having fun. The S55 played a part in developing the successor to the N55, which we know as the B58. The B58 is a slightly larger in displacement, but still three liters overall. Big differences between the N55 and the B58 is that the B58 has a forged crank, forged rods, and cast piston. The engine block on the B58 is a closed deck block, and it's shared with the diesel B57 and runs higher compression at 11 to one. There isn't any publicized factory turbo specs, but the B58 has pushed into the 500 wheel horsepower range on the factory single twin scroll turbo, outworking the M55 by a large margin. 
The B-58 also has air-to-water intercooling versus the M55's air-to-air. The B-58 also has a technical update, which included a better high-pressure fuel pump, which is a common upgrade with downpipes and drop-in turbos and tuning. The aftermarket has shown the B-58 to be one of the easiest engines to get to 500 to 600 wheel horsepower and being reliable as hell at those power levels. <laughs> Now, in typical BMW fashion, they add another turbo and create a beast. In 2019, BMW released the S58. This had its start in the X3 and X4M and then into the G8X, M3, and M4. It was an evolution of the B58, but meant to replace the S55 in the M cars. In comparison, the S55 and S58 are both twin turbocharged, while the S58 uses a twin intake ram with a larger air-to-water intercooler system. The S58 camshafts have much more duration on the intake cam, leading to a better flowing cylinder head while retaining the same valve lift. A key factor of the S58 is the compression is lower to 9.3 to 1, since it runs 24 PSI of boost from the factory in competition spec, versus the S55's 18 PSI. S58 shaved two kilograms from the already lightweight crankshaft, getting it exceptional throttle response. The engine is relatively new, but the aftermarket has already pushed it into the four digit horsepower club, and it makes 200 wheel horsepower over stock just with bolts on. So it's the amount of margin that you can make extra power on in these engines are absolutely insane and yes they come at a cost because it's a it's an m specific engine but there's no denying that the s58 right now is literally the king of inline sixes now i know a lot of people have been waiting for this reliability now when it comes to the older cars like the m54 and the m55s you have to remember and put this into context these are aged bmw products they're 15 years old, 10 to 15 years old. So you're gonna have 10 to 15 year old problems like the electric water pumps will go out. Or like for example, with the early M54 cars, you have the wastegate rattle, the early piezo injectors would go bad, uh, coil packs and things like that. You have to maintain these cars much more rigorously than anything else. Now, as you get into the much more modern um, BMW engines like the B58, the S55, um, and especially the S58, there isn't a, really a big, large issue with these engines. Uh, yeah, on the S55, you have the crank hub, which was blown out of proportion by companies wanting to sell parts. This happens in every industry, in the LS community, it happens in the Mopar community, and now you're seeing it happen in the BMW community as well. People wanna sell parts, people blow things out of proportion perfectly understandable but um especially in the b58 the b58 in my opinion is probably one of the engines that proves to be like the best of both worlds where you still have that simplistic technology that even toyota used this engine in the super and toyota is very big on reliability so if they're willing to use it obviously it's going to be a very very good engine and then as you get into the newer things like the s55 the s58 these engines are just much newer where you don't really have those long-term reliability problems just yet but i mean time will tell in my opinion been the BMWs, um, these aren't swap engines. These are engines built for that specific car and that specific chassis. So I know you're going to get a lot, a lot of LS guides in the comments. Hey, this, oh, I'd rather have a insert Fox body with a leaking 4.8 liter LS with a Chinese turbo that makes 700 horsepower three times before it explodes. You're going to have those type of people, but I mean, it's all good. I love these engines just as much as anybody else.